Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now I'm going to do a, a video that's a little bit different today because um, I'm going to talk um, about uh, drugs and what I'm going to talk about is in particular antibiotics and I want to talk about doxycycline. Now the reason I want to do this video is because I've communicated with somebody who has highlighted to me um, that they um, were um, they had changes in their mental health after they'd um, taken doxycycline and I found that uh, very interesting it's not something uh, that I'd come across before so I did some research on it and I found some quite in interesting information and this video is really just going to be a very quick summary of what um, what I found in relation to the effects that doxycycline appears to have on people's mental health um, there is a, a paper a study that I found that goes with this video that I will put in the comments box below this video. Uh, it's a very short paper, it's quite easy to read, so I would, uh, if you're interested in this subject, I would encourage you to read that paper. Um, I can summarize the paper for you um, in the video, but it's, uh, there is some detail in there that you might, uh, you might want to have a look at. Now doxycycline is an antibiotic, it's often given to people who have, for example, acne. Uh, it's quite a common antibiotic. Um, and generally I think antibiotics are overused um, if you have an upper respiratory tract infection generally uh, you go to your GP uh, you go to your doctor and you'll be given uh, or quite more often than not you'll be given antibiotics um, now there's no real uh, unless you're seriously ill and you have something like tuberculosis there's no real evidence that you know for mild colds and mild upper respiratory tract infections that taking antibiotics actually um, really does much at all it's more of a prophylactic that the doctor gives to get you out of his surgery so it makes it look like he's doing something but really the severity and the length of time the duration that you have uh, an upper respiratory tract infection won't change if you take antibiotics and most people actually go to the doctor after they uh, you know after the initial symptoms uh, begin and therefore they you know in a normal situation where it's a normal common cold uh, you'll actually be getting better anyway so really antibiotics are overused um, antibiotics are taken for other reasons as well you know I'm not saying antibiotics are bad because clearly you know the, the discovery of penicillin saved uh, a lot of lives and when you have um, you know you're, you're in serious um, risk of, 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 of developing an infection antibiotics can certainly save your life but there are two there's this antibiotics are given too often to people who don't really need them and this is leading to antibiotic resistance but what's not really understood is that antibiotics are drugs they do have adverse effects in you on your health um, and this paper highlights that taking doxycycline uh, in the case studies that it presents um, it increases your risk of depression and suicide um, and there is no mechanism that's fully understood uh, to explain why this would happen. There is an association. If you take doxycycline, you have an increased risk of uh, developing anxiety, mood disorders, depression, <coughs> excuse me, and you also have uh, an increased uh, risk of suicide. Um, there is a table on the in the paper if you want to have a look at the adverse effects that have been reported for doxycycline uh, use and this paper was um, based on data in America but you know obviously that you know th this drug is used throughout the world um, so therefore um, you know these this data would be uh, extrapolatable to to other countries um, the paper did highlight that um, in the case studies that it looked at, there was uh, possibly a polymorphism in the um, in one of the enzymes in your liver that helps detoxify toxins, um, and this might be this might interact um, with um, your um, with doxycycline. This was a cytochrome P450 enzyme that is involved in your phase one detoxification. So there may be some interaction there. There may be some. Um, uh, toxins caused the the the, uh, the phase one um, detoxification is a is a step that actually increases toxic load in the liver. Uh, it's very reliant on having the phase two to allow those toxins to then be quickly created into water soluble and excretable products. And quite often the products of phase one detoxification can um, be more toxic than the original drug. Uh, and obviously, if you've got uh, problems with your cytochrome P450 enzyme. Uh, you might also have a buildup of some certain toxins uh, if you if you if that enzyme is is breaking down um, doxycycline as well. So there's some kind of there may be some kind of interaction there. Um, 
another thing to say is that, you know if you're taking antibiotics and you're taking anti uh, you know doxycycline this is not a, a video that's giving medical recommendations this is simply just talking about uh, uh, you know some interesting research that I've come across uh, that I found was very you know uh, uh, another um, another cause of mental health that we you know I just didn't expect to find uh, came across this uh, study like I say after I had communicated with somebody that was uh, that actually said that their uh, you know their low mood had occurred after they'd uh, taken doxycycline and I found that interesting and I looked into it and uh, there is actually quite a, a large amount of reports on the internet of, 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 of similar things happening to other people so doxycycline and perhaps other antibiotics are able to um, negatively affect people's mental well-being so if you have taken antibiotics in the past and um, you know what are some of the other possible effects that you could uh, experience well antibiotics kill bacteria uh, that's what they're for and if you take uh, antibiotics your gut bacteria is affected you have a very delicate uh, balance of microbiota in your in your gut um, this microbiota is seeded into your gut uh, when you're very young uh, when you're a baby and it continues to grow and develop as you uh, as you uh, become an adult uh, and the you know the, the the role of this bacteria is not fully understood but it is known now that it is pivotal to our our health our our gut contains um um, many many um, new, uh, neurological connections neur neuronal connections to the brain and the central nervous system uh, and it's connected to the immune system as well and it's known that the bacteria inside the gut are able to communicate with our own cells uh, and affect our own immunity and affect our own neuronal pathways so our gut bacteria are linked to our brains and our central nervous systems and they do play a a role in our health including our mental health there are for example serotonin receptors in the gut there are GABA receptors in the gut there are receptors for the same kinds of neurotransmitters that we have in our brain uh, and there is evidence that this this system, these systems, the central nervous system, the gut system, um, the bacteria, they're not separate. They're all interconnected and they all play a role in our health. So if you take antibiotics and you kill all the gut bacteria, what tends to happen is that you then get overgrowth of um, other types of microorganisms, uh, particularly yeast. Um, and you can get candida overgrowth, for example. If you have a poor diet, that can also cause uh, an overgrowth of candida in your gut. Um, and that those yeasts, they compete with the good bacteria for the food that's available. Uh, and once they establish themselves, they're actually quite difficult to get rid of. Um, so if you do take antibiotics, it's very important that you eat in a way that, try, uh, that aids the reseeding of your gut with um, beneficial bacteria. There's a number of different strategies you can use to reseed your gut. Um, you can take um, bacteria in tablet form. They're available from manufacturers. You can actually take things like Lactobacillus acidophilus. Um, they, they, each tablet can contain billions of organisms. You simply take the tablet and the Lactobacillus acidophilus will then start to um, seed your gut uh, with those microorganisms which will then um, hopefully outcompete any um, you know, detrimental organisms that have, that have grown in there, particularly yeast. Another strategy that you can use is to take yogurt. Uh, natural live yogurt contains um, uh, bacteria such as bifidus uh, species that can then seed your gut. Um, and those uh, bacteria again are beneficial and it's been shown that those people that do eat natural live yogurt um, tend to have healthier microbiota in their guts. Um, generally plant foods that contain fiber, um, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber, those are beneficial to the gut for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, the fiber increases the rate at which food passes through your gut and that appears to be beneficial for the friendly microbiota that you need and it helps to create this um, this kind of healthy profile of microbiota but also certain types of fiber um, appear to be uh, and are known to be um, foods for the, you know particularly beneficial types of gut bacteria um, and you can actually buy um, supplements of fiber which are which are generally called uh, prebiotics uh, which are which are effectively supplying the food that the, the you know the healthy bacteria requires in your gut. So if you follow those strategies after you've taken antibiotics in the past, um, 
it, it does help you to um, get over the detrimental effects of the antibiotics in terms of upsetting your gut health. And of course, while you're taking the antibiotics, if you you know you take those supplements and 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 eat the yogurt as well and eat plant foods containing fibre that will have um, a beneficial effect while you're taking the antibiotics um, it, you know it's it's very difficult to you know not, clearly not everybody is affected in the same way by drugs not everybody has uh, you know mood changes when they take antibiotics but I just wanted to put this video out there uh, and put this paper uh, in the in the comments box below because you know there are clearly people that have been affected by taking antibiotics and it has affected their mental health and they may not yet have made that connection uh, and if they can make that connection that actually gives them some information that allows them to do something beneficial by reseeding their gut by providing their the environment in the gut that is conductive to um, um, generating um, you know a, a healthy profile of microbiota and that therefore may enable them to get their health back more quickly. Um, so I hope you found this video interesting. Like I say, I will put the link to the study in the comments box below. And um, I hope that it's useful and it will help some people out. As always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself. And I'll see you soon for another video. Take care.